Hello there. Uh, if you're watching this, you're either signed up for Business 225L in the fall semester for 2012, or you're on the opening uh, open university list uh, for the class. This is Jeff Sokol, and I'm the uh, adjunct professor that teaches uh, Business 225L. And the purpose of this video is to give you some uh, background on the class ahead of our first session, which is September 18th, um, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, this is the first time I've done this advanced uh, video distributed out to the students, and hopefully it, you'll find it's uh, useful. I'm trying a number of different technology ideas this semester, and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. This, this video approach seems to be working pretty well, though I have to say I hit one glitch that I'm still working through, and it, it won't affect this preview video, but it's going to affect how we how we do this in the rest of the classes. My, my hope is that uh, we can teach some of the course, uh, essentially recording it along the way, so that if people are interested in playbacks, that um, that those would be available. So in any event, um, the purpose of this presentation is to to give you some answers to frequently asked questions about the course, and then give you a quick intro on on some of the content. Okay, frequently asked questions. So experience level. I have to believe that a number of you who are watching this have no experience doing provisions, and I need to start by saying that's perfectly okay. Um, this this course is an introduction to tax accounting, and uh, we'll start at the very beginning. Um, that being the case, uh, I've taught this course for seven years, uh, or maybe eight years, and it's not uncommon for uh, folks in the class to have more experience than me, just the same. So. Um, you know, it takes uh, it takes all types to, to fill out the class, and um, and I think it's great, honestly, that we have a mix of, of young students with little experience, and then we have some people that are already working at firms, and then we have folks that were working at companies that um, might have 10 and 20 years of experience doing taxes as well. So so expect that whatever you are, you will fit just fine. Uh, attendance. So you will find, and if you've heard anything about the class before, you'll find that attendance is a big deal. And I don't mean just show up and I'll take roll and you'll get credit for attendance. I mean the way you learn provisions is by doing provisions. And we'll do a lot of provision work in class. So plan to be there, plan to be interactive, um, that's important. The um, syllabus will be distributed ahead of class and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, We'll go through the the schedule of classes and dates and exam details and that sort of thing during the first session. But um, one thing I did want to point out about the syllabus, which I think is one of the coolest parts of class, is um, every every class one of your homework assignments will be to read the public filings of a of a company in, in the valley. And the goal of doing that is to have you get used to what companies say about their income taxes from an income tax accounting perspective. And throughout the course, what I'll have you do is um, you know, read a company's filings and come up with you know, what did you think was interesting about it or what, did, what were you confused by or what couldn't you understand. And um, I've gotten in the habit now of having a few tax directors from companies attend the class as guest speakers. And um, so, for example, one of our speakers is going to be the um, the person that runs the tax provision over at LinkedIn. So I'll have you read the 10K for LinkedIn. You can come up with questions about their taxes, and then um, that night um, we'll have the director from LinkedIn come, and you can ask her um, questions specifically. And we'll do that for a couple other companies as well. So I sh I'm confirmed with um, Intuitive Surgical, which is a big, big med device company, as well as uh, Yahoo. Okay, so look forward to that. That's a really cool part of class. Um, I often get asked about texts. Um, we have no text. Um, in the syllabus, you'll get uh, a link to ASC 740. ASC 740 is the actual FASB guidance that deals with income tax accounting, and we're going to reference that. Um, I will also have slide decks for you every class that we'll distribute by email, and you'll be responsible for bringing those yourself. And I will provide all the homework. And lastly, Deloitte 
publishes a guidebook on income tax accounting that I'll hand out as, as, as extra reading, if you will. We won't reference it too much, but I get a lot of requests for what else can I read, and so I, I hand that out as in response to that. Um, is there homework for the first class? You'll see at the very end of this deck that the answer is yes to that. Okay. All right, I wanted to give you a very brief introduction to um, income tax accounting. And again, this is very brief. Um, if you're familiar with, with a provision, a provision is synonymous with a company's income tax expense. Okay? However, when you read ASC 740, what you see is that the discussion revolves around the balance sheet side of the financial statements, and it doesn't deal with the expense in large part. And so right from the beginning, I want to get you guys thinking about the fact that when we do a provision, the first thing we do is we figure out uh, how much taxes we owe. What is our, uh, what I'll call step one, what is our tax liability? Okay? And it could be a receivable as well. And the second step in the process of calculating a provision is to identify what our deferred tax liabilities and assets are. Okay? And, I, you know, some of you may be wondering, well, what is a deferred tax asset or liability? We'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, it's a balance sheet account that addresses the future tax consequences of things that happen today. Okay? So I want you to get in the mode of step one, we'll calculate what we owe today. Step two, we'll calculate what we owe tomorrow or in the future or we'll save tomorrow or in the future. And what will come out of that, the balancing entry, will be the provision. Okay? So each one of these steps will create a debit or credit. In order to balance the entry, we'll have a provision that will just fall out. Okay? Oftentimes people ask, well, where do I find the tax provision? So I've put some screenshots up of the um, balance sheet for the latest um, financial statements from Nordstrom. Um, mostly because they're going to be the homework for the first class. And uh, I want you to get a, an idea of where in the financial statements you should look for taxes. And so if you just scroll down the Nordstrom's financial statement, you can see there is uh, the current deferred tax assets. And boy, you don't see anything else really that's tax related on the balance sheet. And so what that means most likely is that within this line, other current liabilities, there is probably a tax liability, and it's so small that it's not worth individually presenting. Okay. Within that other liabilities line, there could be taxes. And um, it's entirely possible that within the lines I've shaded in purple, or that I just shaded in purple, that other assets, that that could also have deferred taxes in it. So. The point is, it's not going to pop out at you all the time from a balance sheet perspective where the tax accounts are, but they're there. Okay? So within the liability section, you'll find your taxes payable. Within your assets or liabilities, you'll find your deferred tax assets and liabilities. Okay? So generically, that's where I want you to be looking. All right, income statement. So this, again, is a screenshot of Nordstrom's financial statements and their latest income statement. And here, if you're looking for the tax provision, this one's easy. Um, we're going to be looking for this line right there. So when people say tax provision, they mean income tax expense. Okay? And if you look at the income statement, you'll have revenues, expenses, and at the bottom, you'll have income tax expense. And one of the questions I'll frequently ask you is, well, why is that number what it is? You know, why is it not higher? Why is it not lower? Um, what amount of cash did this company pay? Is, it this, is the expense the same that they pay, etc.? But from a, you know, to answer the quick question of well, where do I find the provision, that's, that's where you find the provision. When we teach the class, we're going to be using um, some Deloitte materials that um, I've tweaked pretty heavily for this audience, and it's eff effectively going to follow these 10 steps. Now, I'm not going to go through them in this video, but I want you to start to become familiar with the sequence in which we're going to hit topics. And to the extent you have any experience doing provisions, some of this will look familiar. Um, so you'll see lots of these kind of 10 steps as we go throughout the course. 
in the next handful of slides, what I've put in here is um, a list of terms I want you to start getting familiar with. And we'll go through this in the first class in, a, in quite a bit more detail. Um, but one of the things that's interesting about income tax accounting is it has kind of has its own language it, that's a bit different from tax return work and really any other accounting work. So I'm not going to spend time on this slide deck going through these, uh, these terms. But I, I want you, with one exception, I think in a couple slides, but I want you to page through here, read this, at least become familiar with it from the perspective of, well, I've read it, now I either understand it or I don't, and, uh, and come, with, come to class one with questions. Okay. One thing I'll, I'll highlight here is, again, remember how earlier I said that your, your total tax provision is going to be your current expense, which is how much you owe today, plus your deferred expense, which is the effect of your changes in deferred. So remember step one, step two? That manifests itself in the way in which you calculate your tax provision. Um, this page deals with the definition of deferred tax assets and liabilities. So have a read through this. See if you can make sense of it, and we'll talk further in, the, in our first class. And then the last thing I want to explain is this, this concept of effective tax rate. We will talk a lot about this in class. And uh, so effective tax rate, that's this term right here. Okay. Your effective tax rate is your tax provision divided by your profit before tax. Okay. So in Nordstrom's case, I want to say that their provision, just as from memory, was something like $436 million, and their profit before tax was roughly a billion. Okay, that's not exactly right, but it's close. So their effective tax rate would be in the range of 43%. Okay, that's a high effective tax rate. And that just is what it is, but when you start to see through the homework assignments these different companies we'll talk about, you will find that some of the effective tax rates are high, like Nordstrom's, and some of them will be low. Okay? And a really important skill to understand is, well, what makes it go up or down? And um, that really is the, is the one thing that if you can explain that or articulate that, you can really bridge the gap between a tax accounting person and somebody in management. Because when you talk to a CFO, He's not going to understand any of these terms that we just talked about in the prior three or four slides, but he will know what his effective tax rate is, or she, and you're going to need to be thinking constantly and quickly in effective tax rate terms, okay? It's very important. Last slide, class number one. So here's what I want you to do to prepare for the first class. Um, this is easy. So pick up the Nordstrom's 10K, and you can find it on their website, and search for income taxes. Um, and see what you can find out about the company. Learn about its income tax accounting. Okay? And the easiest way to do this, honestly, is pull up a PDF of their 10K and go into the word search bar for income taxes and just scroll through the document in terms of where that term is picked up. And I've given you three questions here that I want you to answer. And, and uh, do your best. And I know that some of this will be hard, especially if you, if you have no experience, but um, there's no harm in trying. So. Um, Come to the first class with answers to these three questions, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So that's the slides, uh, or that's the the video for now. That's an introduction to the first class. So I'll look forward to meeting all of you. And um, if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, when the syllabus gets distributed, it'll have my contact information. You can shoot me a note, or you should be able to uh, uh, find my contact information through the course flyer as well, or through Annette. Okay. See you soon. Bye.